Brothers, welcome back. So starting a new series today, uh, you that have been around for a long time know I didn't get into YouTube to hit 1 billion damage on Maestro, even though that is cool. Uh, reason I got into YouTube is to be able to help the community and just, you know, generally bring back the fun to video games. So the new series is every week, I like to do it more than every week, but uh, once to twice a week I'd like to receive submissions from the community on their idle on efficiencies and then I will go over those live on camera that way I can give you my honest opinion on where your account is and you know what might need to be improved on just a little bit in order to uh, to be able to see the end game so with that being said uh, feel free as always to drop your idle on efficiencies into the comments or come over to the Palmer plays discord and drop your idle on efficiencies and I will be grabbing two of those a week or twice a week in order to make a video on that so with all that being said, there's going to be a lot to go over, so let's get into it. Alright, so this week's submissions were from Inky and from Tarami over in the Palmer Plays Discord. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move my <laughs> Camtasia uh, bar there and we're going to jump into it, okay? So I haven't seen their accounts yet so we're going to be going into this kind of blind okay so jumping off we'll start over here with Anki's profile you know everything looks good everything looks good there's a couple of them from drop table that you could get um, a couple of them from some pretty easy pretty easy quests you know cattle prod that's a pretty easy quest to do drop table 16 just something you could farm uh, seven figure followers I can understand that you don't have that one you know it's kind of a pain in the butt um, platforms and disguise that's another easy one so as far as stamps I think you're doing a pretty good job on where your count is on leveling them up would love to see everything maybe above level 10 um, just because there's a couple stamps here that uh, you know they do boost efficiency it's not a huge gain but something something to pay attention to coming over on the right hand side uh, brother I would recommend um, yeah I would recommend coming back um, and just going for the ones on the drop table because um, there's a lot of pretty easy quests and it looks like you're missing a couple of them from you know world three a couple of them from the drop table I would just come back and I would uh, try to get some of the stamps because you're doing really good on a couple of them but I would try to get all of them to at least base 10 and base 20 if that is possible but other than that both stamps for where you guys are in your accounts look pretty good so let's go on over to the forge okay so we have some void going on we got some platinum going on good 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 some silver perfect okay so no judgment on that yet have you fully upgraded okay so it's not a whole lot i don't know how much money you have on your account um again i'm not gonna you know say wait harder or wait faster um i would uh if possible go into it and try to fully upgrade the forge that way you know all these slots should be doing something right especially the ones that you've paid to have boosted you know you should be should be using those to get something done but i do like the fact that you're doing multi or at you know one time so you're you're getting mini bars across the board and then let's come over here to tarami's profile you have a lot of plat holy smokes okay so we are all in on plat um, which is good if you're going for plat specifically uh, to unlock upgrades that is huge um, what was drilled into my head is to always have kind of a healthy healthy mix that way you know you're constantly getting all of your bars to a certain degree and not having six billion platinum ore or six billion platinum bars and then you don't have any silver bars you don't have any copper bars you don't have any gold any dementia nothing like that so I would say left hand side looking good would definitely fill up the one that is empty try to max and that's uh that's for both accounts i would try to max both of your guys's forges um easier said than done understood um but when you can i'd make that a priority come over into the anvil for both of you guys okay and let's see what we're looking at here so we have a j man okay a so we have a beginner and your maestro okay so i don't know if you just unlock this character or if that is a j man but hopefully that's just a beginner and you're gonna you know make that into you know something else but as i'm looking at it uh, nothing too out of place um i would personally just personal opinion 
as we're coming down here and we're seeing that the production is getting slower and slower and slower um, that usually means, especially if it's on a Bowman class, that you need to work on, you know, your stamps a little bit more. Uh, it's possible that you don't have the <clears throat> anvil bubble equipped, but let's jump here into the points. Okay. So there's a lot of them that you could fix with monster materials and, you know, money. So something I would focus on, uh, either getting the characters that really need to be able to push the anvil up here into the thread so you can level it up faster. Um, but obviously we're, we're looking for something a little bit more than seven per hour. Um, if that is just where your count is, I would possibly back up just a little bit. That way, you know, you're getting experience, right? Cause it's going to take you 127 days to cap it. Um, I would pull back just a little bit more, um, unless you really want the springs. Um, but if you're not capable of crafting enough, pull back, reassess the situation, get to a point where you can, you know, craft them a little bit faster. That way you're not wasting time. Um, okay. We have the whole squad over here on thread, which is good. If you are able to actively play thread is one of the best ways to level up your, your smithing. Uh, it's XP per hour is just exponentially higher. And then I see we kind of, okay, so we kind of petered off there and we put certain characters into different different things. So I would give you the same advice I gave Anki. I would not be using a Blood Berserker to produce, you know, the bolts. Because four, four per hour, 63 days to max, 105 days here. You know, the slower characters should be up towards the top producing the faster to create items and then your faster characters such as your bowman sometimes your maestro your hunter they should be down towards the bottom uh, crafting those materials so it's a really fine balance but again if you're able to actively play thread is one of the best ways in order to level up your your anvil and now we're into everybody's favorite part which is the alchemy it's usually a pretty good indicator of where you are as far as your account um, so as I'm looking at it, <clears throat> you know, I can tell off the bat, probably haven't hit world four here cause he would have, oh, you have hit world. No. Okay. I, I don't think you've hit world four cause you should have some sort of marker over here on the right, uh, to Rami. So I'm, I'm just going to assume that you haven't hit world four here. We can see she has hit world four or he has hit world four because he has the lab bonus set up but coming in here looks pretty good there's nothing glaring um i'm gonna say the same thing i say every single time there's a couple bubbles that are just exponential to the growth of your account such as the green one second one from the bottom that pushes uh, uh death note and portal opening is huge especially when you're talking progression across world four lab xp bonus exponential right <clears throat> getting all your characters to 75 and then being able to either take them out of the lab keeping them into the lab but unlocking all of those chip slots and then you know you're right there to increase your multi-kill uh, per level so definitely some love over here on the left hand side of the cauldron but like i tell everybody <clears throat> a happy account is a fully maxed alchemy account so i would spend some time in the alchemy getting those up <clears throat> okay um so what I'm going to say here, um, it's possible that you just haven't unlocked them, uh, but I would definitely go to get the frozen souls because base multi-kill per tier is a great one to have. You know, obviously don't worry about the pickle jar because that's a pain in the butt to get to level four, but uh, there's a couple of them, especially along the world three level where you should, I mean, trench water, seawater, max capacity, is that a big bonus? No. But when we're talking about creating, you know, damage potential for your shaman, this is huge. So I would come back, just look at your vials again, try to get at least the frozen souls, get this one because it's easy. Shaved ice should also be easy. Uh, if you haven't gotten the honkers yet, understandable. And then obviously once you progress through world four, these are going to become available for you. And the same thing I say every single time, um, I don't put as much emphasis on sigils as I do having a fully maxed alchemy account. So I would take whoever you have in the sigils right now, I would take them out, I would take them out, and I would put them into every single one of your bubbles until you've maxed your alchemy account. Just my my two cents. Um, are sigils great? Yes. And I think they're really good for in-game, right? When there's just nothing else that you can progress, even though there is always 
something in this game you can progress. Um, I don't think sigils are more important than having, you know, your entire alchemy unlocked. All right. That is all I'm going to say about Anki. We're going to come over to Terami. So as I'm looking at it, you know, same thing. Um, you're obviously, this account on the right is a little bit behind the account on the left. Um, I do like what I see. You're doing a solid job of getting all of the base stat increase bubbles done, which is perfect. You love to see it. Um, where is my damages? Okay, so you're also doing a great job of getting all your damage bubbles up. Perfect. Love to see it. Um, you're going to run into some issues here, right? So with your Shakrishi and your FMJ, um, like I had said in the last video, the priority that I put them into is from easiest, Roid Raging, Swift Steppin', Stable Genius, Lotto Skills, just to increase the base stat of whatever character you are on. And then I put it into damage. The faster you can kill the monster, the faster you're going to be able to heal, even when you are AFK. And then obviously FMJ to increase survivability and Shakrishi to even be able to hit the mobs. So a good focus point, and I, I would say this for both accounts, come back, look at your damage bubbles, look at your FMJ, look at your Shakrishi, whatever those need. So here we have bloaches, we have some tropologs, we have some fruit flies, and we have some cherries. So I would go kill ghosts, I would get my bowman out there to get the fruit flies, I would have my blood berserker or barbarian out there fishing, and then one of my mages, you know, chopping. And then level these up, good solid base point 20 plus um you'd love to see at least 30 plus in both of these so even if that means you got to take some time away from your damages i mean it's just what you got to do uh, let's look at vials okay so there's a lot of room for improvement and i'm sure you know that so i'm not going to go over this you know too in depth but as far as your account is you should have unlocked crabs you definitely have unlocked sippy souls you definitely have red salt uh, you definitely have, you know, both of the, the critter and you have the chonker chug. Um, you should have orange malt. So at least to this point where you've unlocked this sippy cup vial, you should have unlocked all the rest of this. And it would just be getting them all up to level four, which I fully believe that you are capable of doing. It's just, it's going to take some time. Um, okay. So definitely should not see any sigil progression just because of how early on in the account you are. Um, they are nice, again, but you shouldn't, at the deficit of the rest of your account, try to level up sigils. So I would put all your characters back into their respective cauldron, warriors, uh, archers, mages, and you know your, your maestro, J-man, whatever you might have. Put them into the right cauldron and boost up your alchemy. All I'm going to say about that, let's jump into construction. All right, so right off the bat, both of you guys have your skills ready. So we're looking at a Divine Knight, we're looking at a Squire, and I'm seeing something that I see a lot of, um, and I don't know if it's just because when I started playing, I was cautious, so I didn't level up my, I didn't left, level up my refinery a lot because I wanted to make sure at all points I was able to continuously produce the salt, but as I'm seeing, you know, across the board on both of the accounts, I see that we've gotten them to a rank refinery that now we're sitting at every single one of our refineries being low right and we're not able to actually use them um so i had it told to me in one of the best ways possible right and that is build your account around the refinery whatever it is that you need for the refinery is how you should build your account as far as using your uh, 3d printer and that is something i took to heart so i made sure i had my green mushrooms i made sure i had my copper my horns my forest fibers x y and z and every single time i unlocked a new one i would you know reshift or you know change around my 3d printer to make sure that i had exactly what i needed in order to keep my refinery running at all times um, here on the left looking good so you haven't gone too far where you can't come back um, there is a spreadsheet, uh, it's listed in the first video, um, if you need to, you can look it up, but it's a spreadsheet on how to have infinite refinery salts, uh, produced. And I would use that as a good baseline to make sure you don't accidentally level up a refinery past the point where you're not actually going to be able to use it. Um, so I would use that. I would, uh, obviously resample, um, 
yeah, I would resample because, you know, we're not getting enough materials in right now to actually be able to produce salt. So this is not a situation you want to be in. Um, with that said, you know, I'm going to leave it as what it is and, you know, just do a quick reassessment and get these bad boys, get these bad boys running again. All right. Salt lick, you know, we've done pretty good. Okay. So we're about halfway through on the right hand side over here on the left hand side, you made progression all the way down towards the bottom. So for both of these, you know, they're looking pretty good. I don't usually go into salt lick just because, you know, it's, it takes time to get the materials and you know, what can you do? Okay. Okay. So we're going to start over here on the left with Anki. Um, so as far as I know, you don't need Skelefish to run the refinery whatsoever. So that is probably for something that you're trying to craft. Um, I'm seeing a lot of World 4 mats, and I, I don't understand. I'd have to ask you in person, you know, why, why you're doing that. Um, but I would 100%, uh, if possible, just redo all your samples. We've got three empty down here. Uh, we got a lot of mushrooms being sampled, but they're not, you know, green mushrooms. So that's why your refinery is stalled. I don't know if you're going for like an achievement. And I can't think of anything off my head that is super instrumental to the game where you want to have a crap ton of purple mushroom caps. So yeah, um, Enki, I would, I would redo your 3D printer um, unless you're going for something specific. Here on the right, we're looking at Tarami's. Uh, pretty good samples, pretty good samples. Um, let me go back to your refinery. Okay, so you do have enough of the mushroom caps right now, but you're hurting on horns, okay? So I can see you're trying to get that back up. You're trying to do that, which is good. We do have a good source of material, so a nice even spread across the board on things that you would want. Um, as you get better, and this is just some advice for later on in the game, um, where you have the doubles, right, of the same materials being sampled on two def uh, two separate characters, I would try to mix that up a little bit more. So, you know, this is obviously a mage. This is a mage as well. I would, you know, world one across the board, right? So get your, your oak logs, get your forest fibers, get your birch trees. And then on your second character, you know, go into world two, go into world three, world four, you know, some potty logs, stuff like that. Um, and then I don't see another source of any kind of ores, so I would put some love in there. Um, you do have a higher sample than what you're actually printing, so that's a quick fix. Just go back over there, click off of both of these jellyfish, put this back on. Um, but same as on the left-hand side, nothing that you're printing right now is actually going towards things that you need for your refinery other than your horns, the forest fibers and the green mushroom caps. And I think flies, I think flies are actually a refinery cost as well, right? So things that you'd wanna see, you'd wanna see goldfish, you'd wanna see, you know, the other things that are actually on the refinery. So other than that, um, a little bit of improvement for both sides, but they don't look terrible. Okay, so death note. Okay, so you have hit world four. Okay, so that's weird that nothing is popping up yet. We're gonna get into that. Um, both accounts could do a little bit more love. Obviously, you know, you're still progressing. Uh, once you get through World 4 and you feel comfortable, I would come back and I'd start doing that grind. Uh, especially in the Blunder Hills, pushing down base minimum 5 million across the board. Uh, just to get that to a nice even, you know, north of 100%. Um, but that is just a time thing, so I'm not going to harp on it too much. Other than that, I think you both look pretty good. Pretty good. So let's jump into World 4. Okay. Okay, so we just started World 4. You know, we've been in World 4 for a pretty good minute. Okay, so personal opinion, I think cabbages are one of the most underrated uh, items in the game. Personally, I got cabbages to 11 for the Diamond Chef before I did anything else, and that is what got my cooking, which I think is sitting now at 101 billion. Um, I put all my emphasis, which, don't get me wrong, 22 total damage, fantastic. Love it, right? 18 skill efficiency, love it. 72% new pet breeding odds, love it. But none of that matters is if it takes you eight days 
in order to level up, you know, whatever, I, I don't know what it is, the octopus, right? So I would get the 30% all cooking speed, so the cabbages, to at least level 11 before I started worrying about anything. Um, here on the right-hand side with Tarami, you're doing the right thing. Um, obviously, you just started World 4. Um, I would get these to base level 11 for the cooking speed, and then I would try to get the cabbages up as high as you can, at least base level 11. Um, you do need to unlock the Alchemy Bubble Diamond Chef, but once you do that, um, it's a good thing. Get it to level 11, and then just work your way down, hitting level 11 on all of them, and you'll see your cooking speed just ex explode. Let's take a look at the lab. Okay. Okay. So we have six individuals here on the left-hand side in the lab right now. Um, we're still actively leveling up, which is good. Um, obviously, you want to find a good balance between having them in the lab and having them not in the lab. Um, personally, when I went to World 4, I put nine characters in the lab and then went all the way till the end. And then I would remove a character once I got to the point where I could now do it with eight characters, where I can now do it with seven characters, where I can now do it with six characters. And obviously, this is a personal bias on how you want to play the game. Um, if you keep those six characters in there as they are now, which I don't see a bubonic conjurer. So I think that would be a good idea to push one of my characters to, you know, unlock a bubonic conjurer. Get them up to a decent level, maybe, you know, mid-100s, 150 to 200. Uh, take them out of the front lines, put them into the lab. That way you can increase one of, one of two things. You can either make their lines longer or you can grant more experience. And then it's also a nice benefit. Uh, you can give experience to the lowest leveled uh, person in the lab, even if they're not in the lab. So for what you got going on the left, Enki, if, you know, you hate not having four characters to play, that is on you, brother. Um, I would personally put in maybe seven or eight, get closer to being able to do the viral connection. But if you want to be able to play four characters at all times, eventually the six characters will get to that level around 75, 80, 90, where they can connect the entire lab. It might just take just a little bit longer. And then on the right-hand side, Tarami, I'd have to ask you, brother, why none of your characters are in the lab? Um, you know, obviously, Anki wants to be able to play four of their characters. And, you know, if you want to play all 10 of them, that is great. But at the same time, I'd be, I'd be, you know, asking brother, why do you not want the benefits from the lab? Is there something specifically you're working on? Do you just think that actively playing will equate to more materials? You know, the list goes on. Um, I would love to see just a couple characters in the lab at a minimum. Because eventually, I mean, you're going to want to be able to use chips. You're going to want to be able to, you know, unlock viral connections and, you know, all the great benefits that come from the lab. So I'd put at least, at least six people in there, you know, pull what Anki is doing. But none in there at the moment is not, not great, brother. Not great. Uh, breeding. I'm not going to go super in-depth into it um, just because I'm, I don't think I'm the best breeder. Um, you both are to at least beach docks, which is good. So beach docks is where you unlock the spice that is used for the diamond chef. So probably one of the most important unlocks. So the fact that you are both there, I'm going to leave it at that. It looks great. Um, unlock those spices and I think you guys are going to win. And then let's go into characters here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So, my question, Anki, and because I had this question for a minute, is what's up with the uh, the level 78 beginner, you know? Because you have the maestro. <clears throat> what don't you have the second of? You don't have a shaman. If I'm reading that right, you don't have a shaman whatsoever, which makes leveling up, especially in the end, towards... Um, completing alchemy is it's going to be quite painful so i would i would i would definitely ask you brother why you don't have a shaman um so i would definitely look at that and then on the right hand side one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so we're just missing our 10th character here so yeah if you want to progress get all the characters up to the point where you can unlock your 10th character then put them into the lab makes complete sense love it um but yeah i think these are both solid accounts 
Uh, the biggest thing for the account on the left hand side, I would say, hey brother, um, two things. This character I'm highlighting right now should 100% be a shaman just because you were missing out on possibly one of the greatest classes in the game as a bubonic conjurer, which opens up lab and at the same time is great for alchemy. And the second thing is need to definitely look at your 3D printer. Um, what's going on there? Uh, why are, why those specific samples? And I would work around your refinery to make that work. Account on the right, I think you're doing all the right things. Um, obviously, you're just a little bit behind account on the left. Uh, it's going to take some time. It's just leveling up. It's just getting, you know, your uh, ascended classes, right? Your Blood Berserkers, your Siege Breakers, X, Y, and Z. Um, I think you're doing the right things. It's a great account. Um, you just need to play for a little bit longer and, you know, use your alchemy. So you got two shamans, which is good. That's what I have. Um, going to take some time. Look at your refinery again. So the big two things for you, push, get your 10th character. And the second one, uh, give your alchemy a little bit more love, specifically in your FMJ and your Shakrasi department. Um, other than that, I love both accounts. I think both accounts are great. Just a couple things I would personally do, but uh, hopefully, you know, a week or two from now, you guys can message me saying, you know, this video helped and you guys are absolutely crushing the game. That's honestly what I would love to hear. But we are getting dangerously close to 30 minutes, so I'm going to shut it off here. Hopefully, you both learned something. Hopefully, I was able to help. Hopefully, the analysis did something for you guys. And hopefully, everybody watching learned something. And I would like to make this a series, but in order to do that, I do need regular submissions from you guys in order to make that happen. So down below in the comments, if you have an idle on efficiency you would like me to review, please 100% drop it for me, and I will get to that whenever I can. But that's going to do it for me today, boys. Hopefully I was able to help you, and I'll catch you brothers in the next one.